Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today. And here we are with some exciting news. Hope you're having a great day so far, and the following news will definitely add some happiness. As usual, we'll start with SpaceX, and what we want to say today is, come on SpaceX, welcome to Indonesia. Now, people can see future SpaceX launches from the launch sites of Indonesia, as Indonesia invited SpaceX for setting up a rocket launch site in the country, an American business magnet, Elon Musk, has agreed to look for investments in space launch stations and electric car battery plants in Indonesia. Musk confirmed this in a phone call on the 11th of December with Indonesian President Jokowi Widodo and Minister of the Coordinating Ministry for Maritime Affairs and Investment Luhut Binsar Penjaitain. President Jokowi Widodo requested SpaceX founder Musk to look into the probability of establishing a space launch station in Indonesia. Indonesia has several areas located near to the equator. The cost of SpaceX's rocket launch will be lower because its satellite won't need any maneuvering to adjust its orbit to the equator," said Jody Mahardi, a delegate of the Coordinating Maritime Affairs and Investment Ministry, on the 14th of December, 2020, Monday. Elon Musk's SpaceX is now the emperor of private space industry. It's a very common name for space lovers. They've made the reusable rocket booster capable of multiple flights. SpaceX are on their way to fulfill the dream of colonizing Mars. SpaceX completed a successful flight test for its Starship rocket last Wednesday, the 9th of December. The rocket had reached 12.5 kilometers in height before descending to the Boca Chica launch station in South Texas and was destroyed upon landing. SpaceX said that they had managed to collect all the flight data required to improve the rocket further for crewed missions to Mars within the year 2027. SpaceX has previously worked with Indonesia. They'd launched Telkom Indonesia's Mariputa satellite aboard Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida and deployed it into orbit. Lahoot had visited to the United States in November 2020. A meeting between him and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk was scheduled, but it was canceled as Musk was contracted with COVID-19. After that meeting was rescheduled for December. On Friday, President Jokowi Widodo discussed about the launch site with Elon Musk during a phone call. Musk confirmed that he would send a team to Indonesia on the coming month, January 2021, to look up for the investment scope in launch site projects. The Coordinating Ministry for Maritime Affairs and Investment said in a statement on Saturday, President Joko Widodo invites Elon Musk to look into Indonesia as a launching pad for SpaceX. The discussion touched base on the investment opportunities for the electric car company Tesla in Indonesia. The two parties discussed the electric car industry and the main component for electric batteries. Indonesia has several space launch station plans in a row, including SpaceX, Indonesia's National Institute of Aeronautics and Space Agency, LAPAN, declared in a previous year that Indonesia had advanced to construct a spaceport in Baik, Papua. A few years later, Lapan and the Russian Federal Space Agency RKA, first worked on a commercial launch site named Biak Station. Biak is situated near the equator, leading to trouble-free rocket launches from the launch site to achieve more speed with heavier payloads. Another island named Morotai, 920 kilometers northwest of Biak, is selected as an ideal spaceport location by Lapan of Indonesia. Morotai has seven runways to assist the space launch missions. Chances of death from spacecraft crashes are low as Morotai has low population and is in much distance from other islands. In October, Industry Minister Agus Gumaweng Kardasasmita said that Indonesia is consulting with Musk about probable investment in the country, with Elon Musk, SpaceX and Tesla Inc. looking into the possibility of building a plant in central Java. Indonesia has the world's largest deposit of nickel, 21 million metric tons, copper, 400.2 thousand metric tons, and tin, 82.8 thousand metric tons, is publicizing its loads of minerals capable of bringing in wealth, in other words, investments. Nickel is the main element for manufacturing a heavy-duty and durable lithium-ion battery. Indonesian President Mr. Jokowi Widodo is determined in using Indonesia's major nickel reserve to initiate an incorporated delivery cycle for electric car batteries and the electric car industry. Elon Musk said in a tweet in the middle of 2020, Nickel is the biggest challenge for high-volume, long-range batteries. 
Australia and Canada are doing pretty well. US nickel production is objectively very lame. Indonesia is great. The tweet readily showed that SpaceX's founder has interest in Indonesia. Jokowi Widodo is determined with the electric car ambition. His goal is to achieve at least one car out of five cars to be an electric car within 2025. For this reason, also, he called SpaceX founder. But SpaceX is not alone in this race. China's contemporary Amperex technology, CATL, one of the world's largest car battery manufacturers, is already planning to establish a battery plant in Indonesia. The project would cost $5.1 billion. Indonesia Asahan Aluminum in Alum, a state-owned mining firm and two other state-owned companies, Porosahan Listrik Negara and Pertamina, are working jointly to form a battery company that will manufacture and deliver batteries all over Indonesia. The company would name Indonesia Battery Holding. SpaceX founder has to face another two giants in competition. The first one is Hyundai Motor, a South Korean company, has also invested about $1.55 billion in Indonesia for constructing an electric car manufacturing plant in West Java. In 2021, the plant will start production. Toyota, a famous automotive manufacturing company of Japan, is the second giant. It's assured a $2 billion investment to develop 10 types of electric vehicles in Indonesia. We hope to see very soon launches of SpaceX conducting from soils of Indonesia and those famous Tesla cars roaming all over Indonesian roads. Let's move to our next news based on NASA. On the 11th of December, Friday, National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA, declared that Firefly Aerospace, Astrospace and Relativity Space had won the contracts through its Venture Class Launch Services VCLS2 program. These three small launch vehicle companies combined got $16.7 million contracts, in which they're required to launch a number of CubeSats by the middle of 2022, sponsored by NASA. Relativity got a $3.0 million contract from NASA. Astro received a $3.9 million contract for Mission 1. Mission 1 would be a dedicated launch of 30 kilograms of CubeSats into a 500-kilometer orbit at an inclination of TBP degrees between 40 to 60 degrees. Firefly Aerospace, with its ally Firefly Black, got a $9.8 million contract for Mission 2. Mission 2 would launch 75 kilometers of CubeSats into one 550-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit in constellation A and B. 20 kilograms of payload would be sent into a similar orbit but the inclination would differ by 10 degrees. Beside these three companies, another aerospace company, Virgin Galactic, rolled out its Launcher 1 air launch program through a separate company, Virgin Orbit. This Virgin Orbit is now holding the VCLS contract from NASA, and they're planning to fly that Launcher 1 mission within the 19th of December, delivering 10 NASA-sponsored CubeSats into orbit. Till now, these three aerospace companies, Firefly, Astra and Relativity have not deployed any satellite into orbit. Relativity is currently developing its Terran 1 rocket, with its first launch probably in the end of 2021. Firefly is arranging for the first launch of its Alpha rocket early in 2021 from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Astra had already carried out its first orbital launch try in September from Pacific Spaceport Complex in Alaska on Kodiak Island, but it proved failure. Astra is currently in a launch campaign for its Rocket 3.2 vehicle at Kodiak. Our NASA news ends here. Let's move to the latest update based on Lockheed Martin. On the 10th of December, a representative of the Space and Missile Systems Center SMC, said that they've planned to procure two GPS-3F satellites. The GPS-3F satellites bought by U.S. Space Force from Lockheed Martin will cost about $511 million. Two years ago, Space Force got satellites for vehicles 11 and 12 at a cost of $1.3 billion. At present, the latest contract is for space vehicles 13 and 14 and would cost $511 million for U.S. Space Force. This price is much lesser than the previous contract as it included the development costs. 
After passing the thorough analysis of the design, Space and Mission Systems Center purchased GPS 3F satellite for space vehicles 13 and 14. SMC representatives said the program employed an intensive year long process which validated the GPS 3F design as a low risk. GPS 3F, which is the latest version of those satellite models, will provide navigation, global positioning, and timing services. They have a fully digital navigation payload and their signals are far more secured from jamming and other forms of interference. SMC said that the latest version of GPS 3F has a new search and rescue hosted payload, a new laser retro reflector array hosted payload, a redesigned nuclear detonation detection system, and greater anti jam protection equipment. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.